Uh, hi everyone, uh, this Tate McRae album, it's not good. This is the second full-length LP from Canadian pop singer and songwriter Tate McRae, who has been having quite a moment since this record dropped. You could say it's the moment she's been grinding for since making the transition from dance reality TV star to music in the late 2010s, first with a trickle of singles, then eventually graduating to a couple of EPs, and nailing her first major hit with You Broke Me First, which led to creative crossovers with other artists like Black Bear, and Troy Sivan, then her first full-length LP in 2022, and now following that up uh, at the very end of last year with Think Later, which has brought some of the biggest tracks of her career so far, namely X's as well as Greedy, which have raised her profile to the point where she's netting tens of millions of monthly listeners across all streaming platforms, streaming being a reflection of this new era of music consumption, but McRae's success is proof of how little has actually changed in the last 25 years. Because while pop music sound and general aesthetics have evolved quite a bit since the days of Hit Me Baby One More Time, some simple equations have not take some of the trendiest sounds, water them down to their most basic elements, then churn out one formulaic tune after another with little to no variation across the track and just see where it goes. Especially after some well shot music videos and a heap of sex appeal, which of course most notable pop artists have, but the reason it feels odd in McRae's case is there's not really anything to it beyond that. It feels more like a void of style or flair or personality. For one, her music videos are about as artistically daring as like some high school musical choreo, but it's allowed to be titillating. And the art direction, which I don't usually talk about on most albums, but I feel like it's important in this case, sucks. Like for one, the title, Think Later? I don't know, maybe thinking in the moment would have led to the realization that a black panties and a black spaghetti string top wouldn't exactly read against a black background. Plus we have hockey goalie gear, but just the leg pads, which I guess play into McRae's only discernible personality trait that she's Canadian, but not Canadian enough to know that they're on the wrong legs, they're swapped. I suppose her and her team could be trolling for reactions here, but uh, never attribute to malice what could easily be explained by stupidity. Again, the album's title is Think Later, and I can barely tell that's the album title scrawled on the leg pads. Ugh, what are you doing? You're in the big leagues now, and this is your album cover? Reminder that pop music is currently in an era where concepts are king, whether it's Beyonce's Renaissance, or Taylor's Folklore and Evermore records. The dark turn that Doja Cat took on her new LP, the fact that Olivia Rodrigo tries to pack every song with uh, loads of stories dealing in teen angst, or look at every time Miley reinvents herself for a new record, or everything Billie Eilish touches, or every bone in Lady Gaga's body, or every breath Charlie XCX breathes. Even the last Lord album that fell flat on its face was going for something. Hilariously though, this is somehow better than her first album's cover, where she's standing on the wing of a burning plane over like a suburban backdrop, and the Photoshop job is something else. But yeah, yeah, even before I've spun the music, I'm disappointed, and I've spun the music. And the lack of ambition and inspiration is very clear right out of the gate. The record sounds like a boneless thank you next, with basic trap perks, a lot of soft pillowy synths. The singing is processed to hell and feels like I'm listening to uh, not a person, but a pop robot. This album sounds like it came out of a lab, not a music studio. And all of this is compounded with Tate McRae having an absolute lack of anything significant to say. as with her first track here, she tries to pen an ode to getting lost in fleeting desires, letting the intrusive thoughts win, which, hey, there's no shortage of good examples of that very thing uh, these days, like uh, the recent Last Dinner Party single, Nothing Matters. The problem is the devil on McRae's shoulder isn't really encouraging her to do anything all that <laughs> interesting. It's just some pretty basic wants, cut your hair, get messed up, uh, get kind of crazy over a guy that uh, uh, you know, is with somebody else and you want to show up the other girl. Cue the she's so crazy, I love her meme. Look, these are not bad things to want. In fact, a lot of people do want them and a lot of good songs are written about them. But Tate lacks the ability to frame them in a way that feels unique or special or specific to her. In addition to this, the more I hear McRae's voice on this record,
record, the more it puts me to sleep. It's kind of less singing and more vague, melodic moaning with a baby-voiced affectation. It has the breathy, understated sensuality of Ariana Grande, but uh, lacks the vocal range or vocal presence or vocal anything. I mean, throughout the entire LP, there is this blatant dependence on every piece of studio trickery in the book to make the vocals pop and sound good with the layering and the pitch correction and just making them sound as synthetic as possible, which I guess has had the intended effect given that uh, her music is digestible. The downside, though, to this unbroken adherence to formula, we now have a record that has no personality, no personal touch. Take the song Grave, for example, which structurally uh, pretty much brings on every millennial pop ballad stereotype imaginable. But again, vocals are so touched up, doesn't even feel like I'm listening to a person. Meanwhile, whatever intimate vibes you would typically get out of a song like this are dashed by the mere fact that it's just soaked in so much damn reverb. It just sounds like pop gunk. McCray and her producers are really failing to realize that sometimes less really is more with some of these tracks, especially when they're going for more of a tender vibe. Like the airbrushed vocal harmony layers and pitch shifting on Stay Done, for example, are so terrible, it kind of sounds like McCray is being backed up by a chorus of mutant mini-me's. But yeah, the sound of this thing is so sterile and generic, I'm running out of ways to talk about it. Which I guess means I should talk a bit about the writing, which often fails to pull together a coherent thought even when a track is focusing on a topic we've heard done again and again and again in pop music. It's just that the blueprint has pretty much been laid out, so there's no excuse uh, to come off this inane. Like, oh I'm sorry, sorry that you love me, change my mind up like it's origami. But really this song is supposed to be about exes, and what about them? Well, she sends kisses to the ones who think they can do without her, which is not all of them because from the previous line, I guess there are some that just don't give a shit about her and can do without her. There are also some who swear they'll never call her, though McCray doesn't actually confirm if they do, she just says she still has their numbers. Why? If you're saying you're in the power position because you're the one being chased, why are you keeping their numbers? Is there more information? Not really. The next verse mostly just kind of reads like, a, a vain description of Tate herself, that she's a wild ride that never stops, that she's a hard case they can't unlock. She's just unknowable, but uh, if this song is anything to go by, maybe that's because there's not a lot to know. And she also says, I swear I care a lot, just not enough. But also previously telling us, uh, I don't mean to be cold, that's just how I get. She doesn't even seem to have a grasp of her own level of emotional investment here. I'm sorry for focusing this much on one single track, but everything is very indicative of what goes on on the rest of this record, outside of moments like Messier, which feel kind of like a literal ripoff of several different major pop songs over the past 10 years. And narratively, the whole thing seems to revel in how shitty the relationship it's about is. Meanwhile, the title track sounds literally like uh, M.I.A.'s Bad Girls, but for people who think water is too spicy. I'll conclude this video video by saying the closing track, Plastic Palm Trees, is maybe the most fitting moment on the album, in that it's very much about having an experience or being in the midst of something that uh, you think is real, but you come to realize that uh, it's fake, it's all artificial and essentially meaningless, and yeah, that's pretty much the game this album's playing. That this album is in fact very artificial, in fact this album is very much a copy of a natural, organic, interesting thing that provides shade and oxygen and is actually beautiful to look at. Meanwhile, this record is just a fake-ass eyesore. Or, uh, you know, earsore. This Tate McRae LP, it's not good. <laughs>